I gotta tell you, Tad, I was a lot like Damon. Smart-ass kid, I was looking for trouble. Right. Mad at the world. Well, mostly at my father. But you know where I'm coming from, right? Yeah. You grew up in a hell like that. It's, it's very difficult to finally let your guard down and start trusting people again. But, I mean, we were able to do it. So you just gotta be a little patient. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll get there. Yeah, well, unfortunately, patience is in short supply. Lee. Is embezzling from the casino? I caught him in the act. Wow. I really do have the worst test in men, don't I? First a cheating husband and then a lying thief. Well, it was one date, Madison. I wouldn't be too hard on this. You're right. And at least this time I did see the warning signs. Yes. So, want to join me for a drink? Toast my progress. <laughs> well, I'm working right now. I got a little business I gotta care of. So. Well, another time then. I think I'm gonna try my luck at the tapes. Do me a favor. Keep an eye on her. Do you have any idea what it's like to wake up thinking it's your wedding day only to find out the man you were supposed to marry had moved on? Until you lose a year of your life, Erica, you don't get to decide which missing pieces I'd want to be told. Why won't you just let this go? I almost died. I have a right to know what really happened. <sighs> the night of the accident, that river was icy cold. You're fortunate you don't remember. But you know who does? You know who will never forget how that below freezing temperature pierced every inch of his body? Ryan. The man who jumped in that icy water after you. The man who stayed out there searching for you long after the only thing they found was a torn piece of your wedding dress. Jack was beside himself, but Ryan, I've never seen such pain. Even after the authorities told him that there was no hope, he refused to believe that you were gone. You have beaten Ryan up thinking that it was so easy for him to move on. But Greenlee, the reality was that Ryan was beyond devastated. He walked around with this, this haunted look in his eyes. It was as if he died with you. So can you please drop this? You think bringing up Ryan's suffering will distract me from the truth? I'm not letting this go. You are welcome to stay here and spout your conspiracy theories. I don't have to listen. Greenlee's testimony combined with the fact that Kendall was the one that was driving the car that caused the accident that pretty much guarantees that you're going to get acquitted. I don't care. I'm not going to blow Greenlee's life out of the water. And what about your life? You're just prepared to spend it here behind bars? Huh? Because that is exactly what's going to happen if you don't let me use every possible resource in your defense. Yeah, well, you're not going to use any of it. So get used to it. Okay. Listen. If what you did was really all for Greenlee... The jury needs to hear that. This information can prove the fact that, that your actions are justified. Not only did you save her life, but you kept her from the horrific truth that it was her friend that caused the accident. I said, forget it. All right, what if she just testifies to what she does remember? The car was coming right at Greenlee. She must have seen Kendall and blocked it out. The more she harps on that evening, the more it's going to come crashing back at her. Okay, well, Zach and Kendall lied. That's a crime. So if we can shift the focus off of you in court... Okay, you know something? Onto this the... is getting us nowhere. The hell with court. I want to plead out. Brooke and I had some uh, paperwork uh, about tempo we were supposed to be working on, but I, I just kept getting distracted. By what? 
Yeah, but I just, I, I can't get my mind off J.R. I keep worrying about it. Well, then stop, Dad. I'm fine. Dr. Kahn wouldn't be considering clearing me for the D.C. trip if I wasn't. Oh, you, you are coming with us, right? Well, that, that's something we'll, we'll work out the details later. Uh, right now, I have a call to make. He's never too busy for Brooke. Mm. Did you know that there are roughly 6,000 people in need of a bone marrow transplant every day in the U.S.? What? Well, we're going to be in front of Congress. I figured we should look some stuff up. I went online, looked at some statistics. Presently, there's 11 million people who are registered donors. Now, could you imagine how many more we can get with a national campaign? This testimony is the first step in order to make that happen. You're really excited about this, aren't you? You saved my life. I want to pay it forward. I want to save more. And we will, by working together to get the word out. Hi, you've reached Brooke English. Please leave a message. Brooke? Brooke, uh, I know why you're not picking up, and um, I'm sorry, I owe you an apology. I never should have been so personal. So please, call me back. So the minute that the other's back is turned, we're running off and making, you know, uh, phone calls like crazy to the same person. So the nanny's like, you too, you gotta get a grip. She told us, she told us off. She basically fired us. I remember those days. You know, it's not easy leaving your baby with someone new. And we didn't make it an hour. Are you hearing me? Not even a single, not an hour. What are we, we're in trouble. What's, what's, what are we gonna do when Trevor has to go off to college? Well, listen, you know, there is something to be said for a little, a long time. There certainly is. Oh, baby. Mm -hmm. you. So, what brings you here? I read your mind. Bam! <laughs> I got us a bag pack and room 12 waiting at the Evergreen. <sighs> well, you guys have a good time. Oh, we will. Thank you, Doc. Jesse. Angela, I am not taking no for an answer. This time you are officially off the clock. I was going to say thank you. And the flowers are beautiful. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> so are you. It's better than that. Oh. Hubbard. Well, I'll be right there. Evergreen's gonna have to wait. What's the matter? What happened? There was a huge accident off of County Line Road. One of the cars involved was Colby's. Listen, baby, I'm so sorry. I gotta go, okay? Yeah. yeah. 